Hello and thanks for joining us with today's episode of the Grow VC Everyone Funding Startups podcast. All companies, particularly startups, face the crucial and often daunting task of finding just the right people to join their team. A bad fit could jeopardize the whole working climate, while the right match might be just the thing to take the startup to the next level. I'm here with James Brockett, managing partner of Caliber One, a leading executive search organization, and we're talking about the how-tos of recruiting. So James, thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. Would you introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah, my name is James Brockett. I run the uh, the European operations for Caliber One, which is the uh, largest independent executive search boutique focused on the technology sector. And specifically, we do a lot of work with high growth venture capital backed early stage companies. Oh, that's great. So you're just about perfect for our podcast. And, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I can imagine that there's no textbook or manual to teach you how to spot the right candidates. So could you tell us a bit about recruiting in general, what it's like and what it's all about? Yeah, I guess I guess recruiting in general is is uh, a little bit about a little bit about science, but a, a lot about uh, about alchemy, for want of a better term. Uh, it, it's all about understanding really the uh, the skills uh, that somebody has, and where in in order to have acquired those skills, where must they have been, and uh, and very importantly, and this is the 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 subtle. Uh, the area where the subtlety is, is in understanding whether they have the the right fit for the organization, both from a cultural perspective and also from a size perspective. Are they the type of person, uh, and this is specifically important in early stage companies, of course, are they the type of person that's going to be able to leverage the impressive background and the skills that they've acquired in a in a small startup type company environment where by definition resources are, are limited and people have to uh, roll their sleeves up and get the job done. And you've obviously been in the business for a while so you must have come up with different routines and best practices. So what does your process look like and what parts do you find the most challenging? Well I guess uh, the the parts that are, are the most challenging really um, are the uh, the understanding whether whether you've you found the right type of person once you've decided that you have persuading them that they should uh, take the plunge and uh, take the risk and, and uh, join your client and um, the process that that you undertake that we undertake um, is it, is very comprehensive, very robust. So we'll sit down with a with a client and try and understand um, what the job that needs to be d- needs to be done looks like. What are the key elements for the role in order to for somebody to be able to succeed in that job? Wh- what must they uh, have in terms of skills and experience? And in order to have acquired those skills and experience, where must they have been? Um, what companies will they have been? And once we've answered those questions, we can draw up the uh, the market um, in which we can reasonably expect that person to be found. Then the the hard work of of reaching out and or identifying the right people, um, reaching out to them and persuading them to take your call and listen to the opportunity. When actually, ordinarily, the the really good people who you're looking to attract just uh, are not looking for a move, especially uh, at this point in the in the economic cycle when when we've had some some very tough times and people are naturally much more conservative. Uh, and once we've got uh, got people interested, bringing them in to see us, um, and uh, that that meeting in in part is about selling the opportunity further, uh, such that we get their commitment to, to and turn them from being you know, pretty passive in the process to actually wanting the job. And uh, and at that point, we're able to ask them the difficult questions that determine whether we think they're they're going to be right for our right for our client. And those questions can be very searching, and and a lot of those are not about necessarily you know what they've done and what their specific achievements have been, but much more personal ones to try and determine whether they're going to be, uh, as we were talking about earlier, the right fit 
for the client and whether they're going to be able to to, to really uh, get the job done within that that small small business. And this is a field that has probably benefited a lot from the internet and the growing communities. Uh, and there's lots of information readily available online and you can probably go a long way. What kind of extra value does the internet or how much can you actually do online? The the internet has has helped, I think, enormously. Um, it, it's helped people to to understand and to develop their network, and and I think has is uh, enormously helpful when you're looking to hire, especially a sort of junior and and middle level within the organisation. The fact of the matter is, at senior level, it is much less effective as a medium. Um, and uh, typically, your senior executive is is very pushed for time. If they're happy and successful where they are, they're, they're not going to be looking um, at, at job adverts, no matter where they are. And so, th- so therefore... Uh, your ability to target them through through uh, through the internet is uh, is limited or, or really non-existent. That human intervention is important in in helping people to understand why a move into an early stage company might be a good thing for 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 them at that point in in their career, if indeed it is. And when you get to that human intervention, what are yeah. some things that you look for when you're actually going through the candidates and have a sit down with them. Do you have some uh, some things that earn you extra points, or some factors that raise red flags, for example? Well, I think that that, that what um, what we look for in general is is evidence of what that person has actually done themselves in their career. Um, there's a term success has many fathers and failure has none and uh, it, it's amazing how many people will lay claim to a major success that an organization has um, and in fact very often uh, they were part of a team and perhaps a, a very uh, unimportant part of a team that it, that achieved uh, that uh, that objective and um, so it, it's important to understand what people's specific contribution um, was to success within within that organization and um, uh, and that 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 's not always easy to, uh, to 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 really uncover people do tend to, one of the things we always look out for is in interviews when people constantly refer to uh, to we i mean of course it 's important in a leadership role to be thinking about the team and and uh, and how you take them forward but but in the end the buck stops with you there so there should be should be quite a lot of eyes <laughs> and since you work with ambitious and driven individuals and you probably get to interact with lots of those there's always or there's there seems to have been this discussion about top talent and the implications mm-hmm. of top talent uh, during the past say a couple of years so first of all how would you define top talent I think that's that's very it, it's very difficult, and I think there isn't any sort of uh, you know catch-all definition. I think top talent really um, applies to the stage that the company finds itself at, at that point, and the talent that it requires. Um, for example, when it is a very early stage company, perhaps pre-revenue, so there's a lot of emphasis on on shaping the product and going out and getting first customers um, and um, and refining the proposition and, and, and liaising with investors and potential investors um, is very different very often from the type of person that, that once the business has closed those first few customers, say the revenues are, are five million uh, and, and it's all about just uh, building an organization that's capable of of supporting accelerated growth uh, and then leading the business through that phase is is uh, they're often very very different people there are very few people um, who can last through the whole cycle of of startup right through to successful um, large scale large scale business so um, top talent of course 
I mean, I guess as the name indicates, it's just the the, the very best people um, that the market has to offer um, for the business.